Good morning, Miss. Yala, I will wait for one minute, two minutes for the others to join and we'll start, okay? Okay, miss, let's start taking um, the attendance first. Let me share screen. Uh, so this week is going to be about writing. Let's just take the attendance first and then we will start. Yeah, I will allow you to unmute yourselves in case you just want to say you're present or something. Let's start. I'm Jack. Ahmad Salha. Hold on. Kareem. Yes, Miss. Kareem Najde. Here. Maya. Here. Sarah Ahmed. Sarah Ahmed. Hadir. Here. Adam. Present. Hadi Fadlallah. Gabi. Here. Fatima. Here. Sia. Sia. Here. Hadi. Ali Basma, Ali Hassan Basma. Good morning, Miss. Okay, Ali Fadi Basma. Here. Rewa. Here. Serene Ftune. Here. Alma. Alma. Uh, 
Abian. Here. Abbas. Here. Sarah Balhas. Leia Bustame. Leia. Sara Isa. Here. Okay. Alma again, because your name is here, but you're not answering. Alma. Let's start now. Uh, today we are going to start with a new uh, lecture. This session and yeah, for this week is a writing session. And to you know, in the previous sessions, yeah, in semesters one and two, we were covering expository writing or informational texts. Okay. Um, this um, lecture or this session is going to be a twist uh, from expository and informational writing into narrative writing, okay? And it's going to be kind of a twist, a change, uh, because narrative is very different from expository, as you know. Before I start with um, the lesson, let's first just remember that our reading lesson, yeah, the comprehension lesson that we explained last week, uh, was about um, was about was about um, uh, teenagers. Story. Uh, yeah, but I'm just accepting someone in the waiting room. So it was about mm -hmm. teenagers in general, and it was, yes. Miss Nahmoul, the flip grid that we should do for Wednesday, mm. we should talk about like a story that happened with us about like... Um, Something that happened with you. Okay. Yes? Okay. okay. So. Uh, it was about teenagers, and as you know, someone was narrating his story and what happened with him due to peer pressure and what his uh, friends were uh, motivating him to do or encouraging him to do. So this was our story, and we talked uh, last week about the genre of the lesson, which is the personal narrative, and we explained what do we mean by a personal narrative story. Ghadi, are you here with us? Yes. Okay. Where's your name, Ghadi? Okay, so, uh, and we said last time that when we say narrative, it means narrating a story. Yani, whenever someone asks you, what do we mean by narrate? What can you tell them? What do we mean by narrate? To tell a story. To tell a story, exactly. So, what we are going to learn this week is how to tell a story, how to narrate a story, okay? So that's why I am going to start with the definition of the narrative essay. What is a narrative essay? When we say a narrative essay, simply say it means it's a story. When I say narrative, means a story, no need to complicate things, no need to uh, think a lot about it. It's just a narrative story, okay? So what is a narrative essay? A narrative essay or a narrative text or a narrative book, whatever is a story. It's telling a story, maybe a story about uh, you as um, a writer and uh, a, or a story about 
somebody else. Okay, now, when I say a personal narrative, as we said, it means a narrative story or a story. There are two ways to write the story or two uh, points of view to write the story. And it differentiates between writing a story about yourself or writing a story about somebody else. If you are writing a story about yourself or a story that happened with you, so you are the narrator, you are the speaker in the story, then you are using the first point of view. What do we mean by the first point of view? We mean that we are using I and we, because I am talking about something that happened with me. And if I am writing a story or telling a story that happened with somebody else, so I have to use he, she, they, and so on. Now, added to that, the story should be written in a chronological order. What do we mean in a chronological order? You know that every story has a beginning, a middle, and an end, right? Beginning, middle, and end. So, so when I say the story should be written in the chronological order, it means I have to write the events or the um, events that took place in the story in order. And I have to start with the beginning, then move to the middle, and then to the end. So I have to follow this correct time order. Added to that, one of the most important features of a narrative essay is the tense used. Let's see what do I mean by the tense used in the story. Let me ask you a question. Let's say that you are narrating a story, either about yourself or a story that happened with somebody else. It means that this story will happen in future or is taking place at the meantime in present or a story that happened in the past. A story that happened in the past. A story that happened in the past. Very good. So which tense you should use here? Past tense. Past tense. Past tense. So Damon, 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 in the narrative, you always use the past tense. You never use present or future or any other tense. You always use the past tense. Now, since we said that, this is a story or a narrative essay in general is a story then of course you have heard before about something called story elements right have you heard about this before yes of course yes so we are going now to explain the story elements because you are going to use them in your narrative essay okay let's see how if you look at this picture or this slide you can see something called a story map a graphic organizer called a story map remember in the expository writing and yeah, problem solution essay cause effect essay advantages disadvantages essay we used to write an outline before developing our essays remember yes yes now in the narrative essays we're not going to write an outline anymore we are going to use something called a story map a graphic organizer called a story map. In this graphic organizer, we can find all the story elements we need. Let's start with the story elements one by one. First of all, you have to start with the title. Why? Because of course the title is something very essential in writing an essay. It's something that attracts the reader to read the essay. 
it tells what is the essay about and so on. So the first thing you have to do is to write an, uh, sorry, to write a title, okay? The title, of course, should be related to the story. Yani. I cannot write a title from the outer space which is not related to the story. The title should be related to the story and it should be catchy. It should um, attract the reader uh, to read my story. This is the first element of a story, which is the title. Now, we move to the second which is the characters. So the second element of a story is the characters. Who are the characters? The characters are the people who act in the story. And the people who are sharing in the story. And the people who are doing the actions in the story. Okay? If it was a personal narrative, if it was a story about me, myself, then I am also a character in the story. And if I wasn't a character in the story, or if the story was about somebody else, then I'm not a character in the story. But the characters are the people who act in the story. When we finish the characters, we move now to the setting. Okay, let's see. What is a setting? The setting is the time and the place, yeah. where did the story happen and when did the story take place or came and happen, okay? This is the setting. So you have to state the time and the place in the setting, okay? When did the story happen and where did the story happen? Clear till now? Yes, miss. Okay. Now we move to the thesis statement. As you all know, the thesis statement is the most important sentence in the essay. Why? Because the thesis statement, because the thesis statement tells us what is the story about or the general idea of the story, the uh, main point that is going to happen in the story. So the thesis statement is the most important sentence in the whole essay. It tells what is the essay about. It's written in the introductory paragraph and it's the last sentence in the introductory paragraph. This is the thesis, okay? So you also have to include the thesis statement here in the uh, story map. Clear? Now, when I write the thesis statement and finish, I have to move in the story map to something called a conflict. As you know, in narrative essays, we always have a conflict. What is a conflict? A conflict is a problem. Okay, so we always have a conflict, which is a problem. The problem that the narrator faces, the problem that the character faces, whether I was the main character or not, yani whether I was a character and a narrator and the speaker in the story or I wasn't. Yani you have, there is a certain conflict that should be uh, given in the essay. So the conflict is a problem. Of course, you can say problem, but you are grade eight students, so no need to say problem anymore. We can use the word conflict. So we use the word conflict instead of problem. Clear? Yes. 
Now we move to the events. What are the events? Or what do we mean by the events of the story? And to you know that we have a certain conflict. So this conflict should be solved in a certain way, right? This conflict should be solved in a certain way. How? It should be solved through some events that take place. So these are what do we call events. Events are the steps or the uh, a part of an essay that develops the essay. It tells us what is going on in the essay. So this is what do we call the events. So we start writing the events what happened first, what happened next, what happened then, what happened after that, and so on. Then we move to two important points in the story map, which are the ending and the lesson learned. Hello, Anna, I missed to write the ending here, but I should write it, I should add it later. Anyways, so we move to something called the ending. Let me tell you something very important concerning the ending. I know when I say ending, it means it's not necessary to be a solution. يعني مش دائما the ending should be a solution for the conflict or for the problem that it's taking place in the story. Sometimes the ending won't be an ha a happy ending. Sometimes you won't find a solution for your problem. Yeah, it's not necessarily in the day, every time I have to find a solution. No, sometimes there is no solution. Sometimes there is no need to write a solution. Okay, no. so sometimes there is no need to write a solution. There is no need to suggest a solution. Khalas, you just find an ending. A happy ending, a sad ending, whatever. But you are going to find an ending. Hi, concerning the ending. Okay? Now we move to the lesson learned. Why is there a lesson learned here? Why? Because in the lesson learned or in the story that you narrated to the readers, of course, at the end of every story, every one of us learns something. Sometimes you learn that hard work is important to achieve your goals. Sometimes you might learn that helping others is something, uh, is something good. Sometimes you learn that you should not bully your friends at school. But yes. It means we have more than just one lesson based on the story that you narrate. Every story has a certain lesson. I'm giving you examples, but based on the story. Sometimes you learn that, for example, um, lying um, is bad. You should always say the truth. Sometimes you learn that uh, you should uh, be uh, strong enough to face your challenges based on the story. Every story that happens with you in your life learns you something or teaches you something. So at the end of your essay, you have to state the lesson that you learned from this experience or from the story you narrated to the readers. Got it? Yes? Yes. This is what do we mean by lesson learned. Okay, so the lesson learned is 
when you state the lesson that you have learned from the, this experience or based on the experience that you have passed through. Okay. Is everything clear till now? Yes, ma'am. Great. So, as I told you, Miss, when we write a narrative essay, forget now about the parts of an essay. What do we write in every part and so on? We're not going to talk about this today, but you have to remember that you have to fill in the story map before developing your essay. And add to that something very important. Let me tell you something very important. The events that you are writing here in the story map are the same events that you are going to write in your essay. But of course, in the essay, you will uh, explain them more, give more examples, okay? You are not, um, you are not supposed to write a, you know, a specific number of events. You might write like three, four, based on the story that you have. Okay, and this story map will be given to you uh, on the sheet. Yeah, you're not going to draw the story map. You will already have the story map typed and ready on the answer sheet just to fill it. Clear till now. Let's continue with um, when will I use a narrative essay? Why do you write a narrative essay? For what? Who can tell me? Very simple. Miss, I know why. Yes. To tell you something simple, a simple to story. Tell some, to tell just a simple story. This is why we write a narrative essay. Why do I use to write a narrative essay? Why will I use to write a narrative essay? Because I will uh, need to tell someone a story. So I have to um, tell a narrative uh, essay. Okay, so when I need to narrate a story to tell someone a story, it means it means uh, you have to use this narrative essay. I'm not going to talk about the thesis today. We will postpone this for tomorrow, but I'm going to talk about the conflict, as I told you. Here, there is an explanation of every part of the narrative essay, the conflict, which is the problem you face, the climax, which is the turning point or like the tension or action reaches its, its highest point. The events are the stages that take place in the story and they should um, be written based on, um, as we said, chronological order, yani based on time order. Of course, in the uh, graphic organizer, yani in the story map, the chart that I have uh, displayed uh, one minute ago, Monique, you have to write them as phrases, okay? Not complete sentences. Then in your essay, you develop them and you write them as complete sentences. The ending, as I told you, it's either the solution or what happens at the end, not necessarily a solution. And the lesson learned, as I told you, is the recommendation or result learned from the experience you pass through. And of course, uh, after you pass through any experience, there is a lesson that you learn. So you have to give this piece of advice or recommendation to uh, the readers. We also have some time expressions or transitions that we need to explain. Um, these time expressions are very important, especially in narrative writing, because they uh, are based on time and narrative is based on time. Uh, so first, second, after that, suddenly, since, later, you are narrating a story. So you have to use these transitions or these phrases for the narrative writing. Added to that, you have to use concluding transitions. Yani, at the end of the essay or in the conclusion, instead of just starting your conclusion directly, you can use these concluding transitions, not all of them, choose one of them. Like, for example, all in all, this is used in the concluding paragraph. At last, at the end, finally, in conclusion, on the whole, 
thinking back ultimately and in summary, some of these are transitions that might be used at the, in the concluding paragraph and at the beginning of the concluding paragraph, other than the transitions which can be used in the body paragraphs, which are very important and they might connect your ideas and they might connect the events that happened in the story in a very coherent way. Okay, now, tomorrow, we are going to continue with the thesis statement. There are about three or four slides about the thesis statement because it's the most important part in the essay and I always tell you this. When we finish uh, explaining the thesis tomorrow, we are going to move to the parts of the essay. Yani, and I have here uh, three slides in which every one of them contains um, what you should include in uh, the introduction and the body and in the conclusion. And then we have a modern writing model essay uh, in which we are going to read together and explain every uh, part of it uh, before having a graded homework. That's everything for today. Uh, thank you all for attending and I'll see you tomorrow. That's it, okay? Thank you. Miss, I have a question. Yes, ask Celine. Well, Flipgrid, what if and we don't have a story about ourselves? What? Came about ourselves, like flip grid. Uh, talk about anything that happened with you. Anything? Yes, and you have a topic, right? And your topic is talk about something embarrassing or talk about something when you were obliged or uh, you uh, experienced peer pressure. Oh, okay. Did you did you read the prompt, yeah, Celine? Yes, but I, I thought only only about peer pressure. A peer pressure into your experience, peer pressure. Okay. No. The prompt that I gave you is about peer pressure or uh, something embarrassing. Let me see. Sheila, grade seven. Sheila, grade eight. And to which one do you have grade eight? Yeah. Let me check. Class. A problem with our parents. Just a second. Just a second. Let me check. I'm opening it, just a second, okay? Okay, record a maximum three minutes video telling about a problem you faced with your parents due to doing something forbidden. You know, maybe you did something that your parents don't agree to do. Yeah, you know, smoking, going out at night, uh, doing something that your parents consider that this is a taboo or this is something wrong. What happened? How did you face this problem? And how did you overcome it? That's it. Okay? Okay. That's it. Yes. Everyone just has a problem with their parents. What? Everyone has a problem with their parents. Yes, sometimes. if you don't have problems with your parents, please uh, try to imagine something. Okay, guys, please. يعني. This is the answer that we always have. So you can just say, um, imagine something, okay? You may leave now. Thank you. Bye, man.